um, what you're about to, to see today is me just talking about my experience of, of making this movie. It's kind of a scrapbook of what I went through. This is the, the one word that I tend to be concerned about when I'm working on an animated feature, and it is probably the one ruling concern that we have when we start, because without which there will not be a movie. And if um, we don't get this right, there's really no point in going on. So it, it really feels like it's a monumental task, it's a very important task, and we shouldn't miss our cues to get that right. But just like everyone else in the industry or outside of the industry, everyone keeps wondering, um, how are these things made? Right? Um, what do you do? And a long time ago, before I was part of the animation industry at all, I do the same thing that you guys or anyone else back then would be doing. I try and suss out how it's made by uh, thinking about um, what kind of people make them. You know? And I think that the people who make these things are people who think about stories all the time. It's kind of like these people who have this, this brain or this facility, this, this uh, talent to think in pictures and words and sounds and moving images. And um, one of the things that uh, I like to feature in, in these talks is kind of like a simple drawing. This probably you're f familiar with a, a drawing like this and lots of gag cartoons, probably from the New Yorker or newspapers. It's a guy stranded on an island. And there is a bottle with a message on it. So at least at this point, you can't tell that he sent the bottle off with a message, or is the bottle coming towards him. But your mind can wander, you can figure out probably one or the other. And I like that, that drawing because it, it intends a story already. And one of the questions, there's actually two questions I get asked every time that I give a talk or I am in public talking about movies or making movies. And it's these two questions. One is this. That's always fun. <laughs> and then the other one is that, of course. <laughs> so I, I ask these same questions myself, because even though I'm a practicing professional now, I'm still a fan, and I still am interested in the answer to these two questions. And um, what I get to talk about today are actually at least my version of the answers to these two questions. You know, but first, let's figure out this question. How is this done? And the best way that I know, without actually being in the studio to find out how things are done, is that you look at a movie's end credits. Here you start to figure out what you need in terms of people. You need probably directors. In this case, we have Pete and Bob Peterson, his co-directors, and a producer. And you get lots of people that will stream by. This is probably the number of people you'll need to get through an animated feature. And, and if you play this credits long enough, you'll see whole lists of names, departments, expertise, things that you will need to finish a movie. And, and probably you'll, you'll be able to, to think that that's all you need. But actually, what you can do also beyond that is visit a certain studio's website, <laughs> like Pixar's. We actually have an outline there for how we make our movies. Like, step one would be uh, See? There. So you can go through all these steps to try and figure out how a movie is done. And as an outline for it, you can see that first you need a story, and then you need a treatment, you start writing it, and then you can get, oh, storyboards are drawn, voice talent, <laughs> editorial. Now, this list can go on and cover all of these steps. all the way down to the last, what we call, the finishing touches. And then you get a measure of the distance that you have to travel to make a feature. And of course, that's not enough. 
because that's not quite all the information you need. So what we're going to do is, is start right at the beginning. At the beginning, you ask someone, please tell me a story. That's where it should start. And in this case, when it starts, it starts with someone like this guy. <laughs> this, is, this is Pete Doctor. Uh, Pete actually decorates his office in this wilderness motif. And he stays there and he starts thinking of ideas. And, and one day he has this one particular idea. And he, he can't let go of it because there's something fascinating about it. And, and he tries and draws them out. And it's this guy. <laughs> and of course, as soon as he shows you that, you wonder, what? What's the story behind this guy? And Pete starts drawing some more, and he starts figuring out what he likes about this guy. I mean, Carl is quite skilled at balancing spoons on his nose. That's, you know, always wears a tie. All these things. He starts fleshing out all these ideas, and then like that, he starts sharing it with other people. And then the other drawing that he will make is about an old man, grumpy as this guy, carrying a bunch of balloons, colorful ones very happy. So the contrast of having a grumpy old man and colorful balloons, very intriguing. I want to find out what happens next. And, and from that seed of being interested, he starts fleshing out the story. And he tells me the story. He tells Bob. And he tells John. And then the next thing you know is go further. Try and find out what the story is about. And we start feeling what else could be in there. And as soon as we start, I start wondering, Pete, I ask him, Pete, where's the story coming from? And then he tells me, and he tells me, you know, sometimes being a director or working in animation or whoever you are, life sometimes gets to be a bit much, so much pressure, that what you want to do is just push the world away and go somewhere else. And I think, huh, and where would you want to go, Pete, if you were going to go and go somewhere else? And so it's like, well, I'd like to go somewhere like a desert island. Really? You know? So, you just want to step away from the world and go someplace. Well, Pete, I think we can make that movie for you. Now, it's very interesting that I, I always ask that of the people who I follow into the breach of making these movies, because it has to come from somewhere. The idea of an old man is in itself very interesting. An old man carrying lots of balloons is fun. But I want to find out what it means to Pete. Why the story? And as soon as he tells me that story, I can kind of understand what he's trying to do. 